I want to talk a little bit about our uh, software system, the module system that we have on the current machine. So first of all, modules are essentially just, it's a software system that allows you to load common software packages that we have pre-built for the machine. Um, so things like Python, GCC, um, and other libraries. And um, this saves you having to build them yourself. So a module essentially, all it does when you load it is just dynamically modifies your environment so that you have access to particular things that that provides. So binaries and header files, library files, whatever that might be. And if you know anything about environments on, on Linux, it's essentially just modifying your path, the C path, LD library path, things like that. And so this is useful because what we can do is we can build a whole bunch of software with many different versions as well, um, because people have different requirements. And so it makes it very easy for you to just load whichever version you need and sort of stack them all together um, to run your software, run your code or compile your code. So one key difference um, on our setup is that we enforce a hierarchical module structure so I think on the old OzStar, uh, this was not quite enforced as it is now. So there's something just to keep in mind. But essentially, modules fit into three categories. So there's your core core modules, there's compiler-dependent modules, and there's also MPI-dependent modules. And they sort of stack together in this hierarchical structure. So core modules are always available for you to load because they only depend on system libraries and other system um, packages that are in the operating system itself. Um, then we have compiler dependent modules, which become available to you once you load a particular compiler from, from the core modules. And then on top of that, there's MPI dependent modules, which only become available once you load a particular compiler. So um, yeah, things like HDF5 is built with a particular GCC and a particular open MPI. So it's important to keep this in mind um when you are searching for modules on the system and i'll we'll go through a little example later on so here's kind of an example um so this is a tool chain called FOSS, which stands for free and open source software and uh tool chains is just basically a set of com compilers and, and an mpi package and a bunch of other libraries that kind of standardize um, building other software dependencies. So as a user, it really just seems to use, it really just appears as a shortcut for loading a chain of these um, modules all at once. Um, so here you can see that the FOSS 2022B toolchain, it consists of uh, the GCC compiler at the bottom, followed by an open MPI and a bunch of other mm, uh, compiler modules, compiler dependent modules like the OpenBlaz and, and FFTW. And then on top of that, there's some MPI dependent modules like Pack and the MPI version of FFTW. Now to navigate all the modules on the system is the common commands. So one thing to really keep in mind here is that when you type module avail, this is only going to show modules that are currently available to you given what else you have loaded. Um, which I think is different to what we used to have on the old system. If you really want to see every single module that's available, you use module spider. Um, and to see more information about a particular module, you can do module spider and then the module name. Now there's also a shortcut command. So if you don't like typing out full module command at all times, you can use this ML shorthand. So just ML on its own will do list all your currently loaded modules. Um, MLAV is going to list uh, all your currently available ones and so forth. So I think what I might do is just demonstrate this in a terminal because it's a little easier to see. So I've logged into uh, the new supercomputer and if I do module avail, you'll see these are all the currently what current modules that are available for me to load. So at the bottom we have all of the different tool chains that I've talked about. Um, but then here are just the core compiler modules. So you see, it's kind of a shorter list. This isn't everything that you could possibly load. This is the current ones um, because you haven't picked a particular compiler yet. So let's go ahead and pick the GCC 12 compiler. 
And so I'll do module load. And one important thing is that you have to specify a particular version. We enforce that here. There's no default uh, module versions. So now if I do module avail, now we have a longer list. We have not only all the core modules from before, and we've got this little L here that shows what we loaded, but we also have these compiler dependent modules available to us as well. So if we want to get the next level on the hierarchy available to us, we need to pick a particular MPI. Um, so here we've got two to choose from. Um, so let's pick the 414 version of OpenMPI and load that as well, add it to our stack. So you can type module load, or as I said, there is the shorthand, just ML, So what I use. So now if we do module avail, we see we have an additional set of modules available to us at the top here that are dependent on this particular OpenMPI. So this is useful just because it prevents um, any conflicts and makes sure everything works together, it fits together well. Um, of course, you can type module list to show everything that you have currently loaded. Um, and you'll see, often you'll see a lot of these grayed out ones. So these are these are additional modules that you could in principle load manually, but they're just dependencies of these ones. So a user on their own shouldn't typically be loading these libraries. Um, you'll only really want to be loading GCC, OpenMPI, these high level modules. I also want to show the spider command. So module spider will show you a comprehensive list of everything that is available to load. Then you can scroll down through that. So there's everything here. Um, and then of course, if you want to see information about a particular, more information about a particular module, you can do module spider, say, open MPI. So it'll tell you what it is and what versions are available. And if you do module spider of a particular version, it will actually tell you uh, what modules you might need to load in order to load it. So this is since this is a compiler dependent module, it in is you need to pick one of these compilers first before you're able to load this version of OpenMPI. Uh, 